Alright, hey everybody. I'm gonna make a quick little video. Hopefully, I won't keep bumping that damn camera, but make a quick little video. Uh, getting started, gonna film a few pieces of me putting together a set of collars. Um, first off, here, got some 13 inch long straps. That's what I use for this piece here. Uh, cutting the straps is simple. Just take your piece of leather, make an initial straight cut using a straight edge. Then the easy part is you gotta make sure this cuts nice and straight. Then you use one of these strap cutters, set at the dimension you need, cut it through. It takes very little practice to get used to, so I wasn't even gonna bother showing that. <clears throat> now what I'm going to be doing here is measuring out for the hole for the buckles. Now, straps 13 inches long, I like to center my buckle at an inch and a half from the end. Now the end of this tape is a little crooked, so I just start at that one line so I get a, a better mark. <clears throat> I'm put my center dot there. Make sure it's actually centered. The half inch mark. It's an inch wide strap. And then from there, it's going to go. Oh. I've got a total width of an inch for that buckle spot space. I'm going to go ahead, verify, make sure those are good at the half inch mark where I need them. And they're good. Now there's a few different ways people go about this. And you could just punch two holes, and use a razor's edge, cut it clean various sizes these punches I've got a half inch one here and I just pump, use it twice <clears throat> now what I like to do is I'll take and uh, punch out these holes with my rotary punch And switch over to here. Get it pretty well lined up. Punch it through. This one pretty well lined up. Punch it through. Now things are going to be a little slightly off. Then I'm going to come in with my razor blade. clean it up. Now, trick is don't go all the way to that other punched hole. Flip it, finishing, finish cleaning it off. I just find when I do it this way, I make less mistakes that I cannot correct. You know, once you get going this way, if you get on pass through there, you just end up with something that's not going to clean up well, and it's not going to be, you know, you want to, you want to be able to take pride in being able to put your name on what you're making and say, I made that. Next I go to this other end here, punch around. I like to go ahead and mark the center of this here 
to eyeball it easier. Yeah. Now this, when I bought this, I bought one actually sized for an inch and a quarter years ago. Both these and these are a good 10 years, 10, 12 years old. So back then I bought one for much bigger size, for well, an inch and a quarter, thinking that'll work for both inch, inch and a quarter. I'm off just a slight touch. Now that's fixable by simply realigning. There you go. There. That's much better. Um, and you can eyeball it that way. I don't ever actually use an inch and a quarter anymore, so it was just a wasted idea. But it still affords me a little bit of flexibility if I decide to go that route. Now, next step I'm going to do is my holes. Alright. Now, the spacing on these all varies. You know, different makers use different things. But for cuffs, a half inch is usually good space in between the holes. Um, I found I just tend to prefer going with 5 8 spacing. And that's at the center of the hole. So I come in an inch off the rounded end. And that's why I cut that first before I mark these. I mark my first hole. And then I just simply go... Uh, every five-eighths from there. Well, I've got one, two, three, four, five holes. Right, do five, you know, depending on how much size variance you want, you know, that sh usually works just fine for me. Now you're doing those initial holes rather light, you, so you can, light enough you, you can find them. But also not to the point where they will be visible when everything's said and done. You know, just in case you're a bit off on these, so when you punch your hole, it isn't an issue for you. I've got my holes lined up. Move this over to a bigger size. Take your time here. Make sure your punch is good and centered. Now, you can also you don't want to get one of these right away you can also just yeah, get get one of these that you can swap out the sizes from they're cheaper than rotary punches um, and, a lot, and yeah, you don't need to go anything fancy I never do you know these especially these ones here are the more expensive one I mean this one's old rather old um, these are all rather old but these are just help take time you know when I first started our first few years I was cutting everything by hand like that these just take a little bit less time makes things a bit nicer 
Um, next step will be oiling this up. There's different types of leather oils and there's other plenty of other stuff that can be used. Um, so I'm gonna oil this. I ain't gonna bother filming that part because I'm gonna oil it once I got the rest of everything else done. And then once the oil has time to soak in and dry a bit, then you can move on to dyeing the leather. Um, I don't think you guys need to see me do this one, so I ain't going to bother wasting all your time, just a little bit of your time. So we'll pick it up again later, when I've got time to come back out and dye the leather, maybe tomorrow after work. Alright, you guys all take care of each other. Remember, life's beautiful, motherfuckers. Go out and live it.